Hey, Cryptosans, it's 10 p.m. Pacific time. My name is Nicodemus, and welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. And it's 10 p.m. on a Tuesday, December 27th, 2022. Not a lot of news today, so let's take a look and see what we've got. The U.S. Department of Justice is investigating the disappearance of around $372 million in digital assets from the cryptocurrency exchange FTX, as well as its U.S. subsidiary FTX US. FTX reported abnormal activity involving the transfer of over 228,000 Ethereum out of the exchange. Now, this transfer was made by an unknown party in November. This was when the company was starting to go through the bankruptcy process and their internal issues and all that. In fact, on the day that FTX filed for bankruptcy, the company's general counsel confirmed that unauthorized transactions had taken place. To protect their assets, the exchange moved all of their cryptocurrency to cold wallets. A blockchain forensics firm later reported that the unauthorized transfers totaled $477 million and the stolen Ethereum had been swapped for RenPTC and then converted to Bitcoin through a service called RenBridge. Ren was bought by a hedge fund that's linked to FTX in 2021 and has been accused of laundering large amounts of cryptocurrency. Now, Sam Bankman fried claims to believe that the incident was carried out by either a former employee of the company or someone who had access to a former employee's computer. In an interview, he stated that he had narrowed it down to a list of eight people, but he did not know which one was responsible. Zach XBD reported on November 29th that some of the stolen funds had been transferred to the Singapore-based exchange OKX using a Bitcoin mixer. The managing director of OKX confirmed that the company was aware of the situation and was investigating the movement of the funds. Not too long after the attack started, FTX general counsel Ryan Miller tweeted that his company was, quote, investigating abnormalities with wallet movements. He later pinned a message on FTX's official Telegram support channel, quote, FTX has been hacked. FTX apps are malware. Delete them. Chat is open. Don't go on FTX site as it may download Trojans. Current CEO, John J. Ray III, confirmed that the company was hacked through a statement on Twitter. The hack is being investigated by law enforcement, and it's being investigated separately from the fraud case against SPF. Some believe that the hacker may be an FTX insider based on their access to multiple cold wallets and the use of a personal Kraken account for one transaction a portion of the stolen funds have been frozen. In the meantime, U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan has been assigned to preside over the fraud case against SBF. As we reported, U.S. District Judge Ronnie Abrams recused herself from the case on Friday. She did so because of a potential conflict of interest. This potential conflict comes from the fact that her husband is a partner at law firm Polk, Davis & Waddell. Now, Davis, Polk & Waddell advised FTX in 2021. Presently, they are advising parties who might be opposing FTX and Sam Bankman fried in the upcoming bankruptcy proceedings. Judge Kaplan has been a judge in Manhattan since 1994. He has handled many well-known cases. In 2014, he ruled in favor of Chevron in an environmental case. In 2021, he was involved in the sexual assault case involving Prince Andrew that was eventually settled out of court. He is also presiding over a lawsuit by ex-journalist E. Jean Carroll. Now, Carroll accuses Donald Trump of defamation. He is also responsible for a civil lawsuit against Kevin Spacey for an alleged unwanted sexual advance. The 78-year-old is known for his no-nonsense style and quick decision-making. No stranger to crypto, he dealt with the very first federal Bitcoin securities fraud prosecution. Now, we also learned that Sam borrowed millions of dollars from Alameda Research to buy a stake in Robinhood Markets. He stated in an affidavit that he and his FTX co-founder, Gary Wang, borrowed over $546 million from Alameda through promissory notes in April and May. So they apparently used this money to fund emergent fidelity technologies. 
That's a shell corporation that purchased a 7.6% stake in Robinhood back in May. Currently, there's a dispute over the ownership of 56 million Robinhood shares. These shares are worth over $440 million. Crypto lender BlockFi, FTX Group, and Bankman Freed are all trying to claim ownership of these shares. Now, BlockFi, who has also filed for bankruptcy, they claim that they are entitled to the Robinhood shares. They say this due to a deal made by Bankman Freed in November. These shares were used as collateral for a loan from Alameda Research, which is funny because Alameda Research is the company whose funds were originally used to buy the shares. We like to say that code is law, but sometimes law is law, as one Abraham Eisenberg is finding out. Authorities have arrested Eisenberg for his involvement in the $114 million exploit of Mango Markets. The charges against him have been unsealed in a court in New York. Eisenberg has been charged with commodities fraud and commodities manipulation. He is accused of leading a team to exploit Mango Markets in October by manipulating the price of the exchange's native token, MNGO. He's accused of buying a large position in MNGO, thereby inflating its price by 1300%, and then using that to borrow other tokens without ever intending to pay them back. When Mango's price fell, Eisenberg's position was not valuable enough to cover his debts in other tokens. He claimed that he was using the Mango platform as it was designed, even though the development team did not anticipate all the consequences of the design. Mango users voted to let him keep $47 million out of the $114 million that he got while he returned the rest. So, authorities are charging Eisenberg with criminal market manipulation, even though the issue was resolved through a decentralized statement. It is unclear if there will be any criminal charges for the rest of the team. Sometimes code is law, but usually code is code and law is law. And speaking of exploits, some users' private keys may still be at risk according to the CEO of BitKeep. He recommended that users who downloaded the BitKeep 7.2.9 APK malware, they should move their assets right away. Now, APK stands for Android Package Kit. That's the file format that Android apps are distributed on, on sites like Google Play. CEO Kevin Como warned that some users' private keys may be at risk after a security incident that caused over $13 million in losses. BitKeep is a popular decentralized finance multi-chain wallet with over 6 million users. Now, Como reported that the BitKeep APK installation package was hijacked and was replaced by a hacker. This has caused some users to install malware that led to a leak of private keys. Como described this as a, quote, large and atrocious hacker attack incident. He advised users who downloaded the 7.2.9 version to move their digital assets to a new wallet. He stated that it is likely that these wallets have had their private keys leaked. The BitKeep team has been working with security firms like SlowMist to trace the stolen funds and gather information about the attack. They have also collected evidence of the Android 7.2.9 APK malware and made a complete recollection of the hack's timeline. This information was provided by Kevin Como, the CEO of BitKeep. Meanwhile, Web3 data analytics firm OKLink reported that the attacker created fake BitKeep websites with an APK file that resembled version 7.2.9 of the BitKeep wallet. So users who downloaded and used that file had their private keys or the seed words stolen and then sent to the attacker. Argo has stopped trading on NASDAQ because they're going to be making an announcement. The company has been having financial issues because of energy costs are high and the value of Bitcoin has decreased. Argo blockchain has stopped trading on NASDAQ due to an upcoming announcement on December 28th. They also cited the London Stock Exchange being closed on the 27th as a reason for the suspension. Trading is expected to resume on December 28th. Now, Argo has had financial difficulties. They've been facing bankruptcy rumors because energy costs have increased and the value of Bitcoin has decreased. On December 9th, Argo accidentally shared a document that incorrectly said that they'd filed for bankruptcy. As a result, the London Stock Exchange and NASDAQ stopped trading their shares. Argo had to ask for trading to resume because they'd not actually filed for bankruptcy. 
That said, Argo admitted that they may not have enough money to keep their business running within a month. However, they said that they were still trying to avoid bankruptcy. On December 16th, Argo announced that NASDAQ was paying attention to their low share price, which had been below $1 for 30 days. If their share price did not close above $1 in 180 days, they would be removed from NASDAQ. Argo voluntarily stopped trading their shares on December 27th. They will make an announcement on December 28th before the London Stock Exchange opens at 8 a.m. UTC. The wife of Hal Finney is organizing a charity event for Bitcoin. The goal of the event is to raise money for people affected by ALS. Fran Finney is holding a charity event to help people with ALS. This event will happen in January of next year. Now, there's a couple of ways that people can participate, either by running a half marathon or by sharing their experiences online. The goal is to raise money to fight ALS. Fran made the announcement using Hal Finney's official Twitter account. She reactivated the account to save it from being deleted by Twitter. The charity event is called Running Bitcoin. Running Bitcoin was his first ever Bitcoin tweet. Running Bitcoin is happening with the ALS Association Golden West Chapter. The organization helps people with ALS by lending them equipment and providing educational materials. And so they're selling Running Bitcoin t-shirts and rare Hal Finney collectibles to raise money. They will give some of these items to some contributors. Hal Finney was an important person in the history of cryptocurrency. He made a system called Reusable Proof of Work in 2004. This system allowed hash cash coins to be used again. Some people consider RPAL, or Reusable Proof of Work, to be an early form of cryptocurrency, although it relied on a central server instead of a decentralized network. Hal Finney added code to the Bitcoin code base in 2008 and 2009. He received the first ever Bitcoin transaction in which Satoshi Nakamoto sent him 10 Bitcoin. Finney was an avid runner before he was diagnosed with ALS in 2009. He fought the disease for many years, and in 2014, he was chironically preserved. D-Gods and Utes are two top Solana NFT projects. Another thing that they have in common is that they will be leaving the Solana network. D-Gods will move to Ethereum, and Utes will move to Polygon in early next year. The teams behind the projects have confirmed the migrations on Twitter. The project leader, Rohan Vora, said that D-Gods may have reached its maximum potential on Solana. Vora, also known as Frank, said in a Twitter spaces that it has been difficult to grow at the desired rate on Solana. Therefore, the team has decided to move to Ethereum in order to continue growing. D-Gods and Utes are two popular Solana NFT collections. At the time of writing, D-Gods had a floor price of 515 Solana, around $5,750. That's the highest in the ecosystem. Utes, a sister PFP collection released this fall, had a floor price of 148 Solana, around $1,660. After the migration announcement, D-Gods sales increased and the collection's floor price rose by around 12%. Ute's sales remain stable, and its floor price only increased by 5 Solana, around 55 bucks. In the week prior to the announcement, Degods and Ute's accounted for nearly 70% of all Solana NFT sales. The decision to migrate Degods and Ute's caused tension on social media because some builders in the Solana NFT sector opposed the move, while collection holders generally support it. In early December, at Art Basel in Miami, Rumors circulated that the DeGods team asked the Solana Foundation for $5 million to stay on the Solana platform, but the team denies this. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. We'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs>